This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today my topic is the intestinal obstruction. Basically the intestinal obstruction it mainly occur in the small intestine. Why? Because the lumen of the small intestine is narrow as compared to the other parts of the intestine. Now what will be the clinical presentation of this disease? You can say clinical features of the intestinal obstruction. This is very easy. The first is the pain. Obviously, the patient will be complaining the pain. Then, for suppose I am making here a intestine. Clear? This is your intestine for suppose. Just a part of your intestine. And here is for suppose your obstruction. Now, proximal part, yeah, you can say the proximal to the obstruction, the intestine will be distended. Why? Because food will stuck here, it will start to accumulate and the intestine will be distended. So our second clinical feature will be abdominal distension. The patient will be complaining of the abdominal distension. Then third one that in the later stages, what happens that there will be vomiting. Patient will complain of the vomiting and distal to the obstruction. What will be their constipation? Clear? So these are the clinical features that are presented by the patient and these are very easy. Pain, abdominal distension, vomiting and the constipation. Now we are moving on to the causes of intestinal obstruction. That what are the main causes that results in the intestinal obstruction. So remember one thing that there are four main causes of the intestinal obstruction that we will be discussing one by one. So number first cause of the intestinal obstruction is the hernia or you can say hernias. Then the second is the volulus. The third cause of the intestinal obstruction is the adhesions and the last one is the intussubception. Clear? So these are the four main causes of the intestinal obstruction and I will be telling you these one by one starting with the hernias. Basically what are hernias? Hernias discussing according to the intestine that hernias basically when the component or part of the intestine that protrudes out from the defect from a defect or you can say from a opening that is called as the hernia clear so for suppose uh, you can say if it is moving out from the it may move out from the inguinal canal it called it will be called as the inguinal hernia it uh, the intestine will protrude may protrude from the femoral canal for passing from the femoral link to the femoral canal it may be the umbilical hernia in the region of umbilicus or at the region of the scar surgical scar clear but more commonly it is present at the inguinal region or you can say in the inguinal canal so we will be discussing that how the hernia they will be resulting in the intestinal obstruction for suppose this is your this is your I'm making here the inguinal canal. This is your inguinal canal. Clear? And this is the deep inguinal ring. This is superficial inguinal ring. Clear? Now what happens that the part of the intestine, it protrudes from this into this means this is your ring and this is your canal. Now the part of intestine will be protruding through the ring into the canal. Clear? Now this uh, sac, you can say hernial sac, it is having two parts here you can see. One is the neck I am making here. See this is your sac. This is the neck of the sac and this is the body. Clear? So neck is present at the inguinal ring while the body is present in the inguinal canal now what happens that initially initially this uh, hernia or this uh, part of the intestine this is you can say reducible or reversible why because when you push it upward it will move upward means this is reducible or reversible but 
what happens in the later stages what happens that the venous supply this is uh, means compressed in the later stages when the venous supply it is compressed so the stasis of the blood occurs clear blood stasis occur and here edema starts to develop when edema develops so this body of the sac it becomes bulged or it bulks clear it becomes bulge it bulge out clear and this bulging leads to the entrapment of this sac into the canal now it is not reversible now it becomes irreversible because it, it is increased in size it becomes edematous so now it becomes entrapped in this region in the uh, inguinal canal and this entrapment you can say this entrapment is called as the incarceration in carceration that is entrapment of the uh, hernia you can say in the canal clear this is called as the incarceration now further when the venous supply is compromised now uh, further in the later stages what happens is that the arterial supply is also compromised clear when the arterial supply is, comp is compromised it will be resulting in the strangulation clear this is strangulation then finally what happens that strangulation will be leading to the infarction of this part of the intestine and when this is infarcted obviously it means that it is similar to the obstruction that if it is infarcted means there is no use and the intestine will be obstructed and the similar symptoms will be appear that i told you previously the pain abdominal distension vomiting constipation all those symptoms starts to appear and in this way the hernia will be leading to the intestinal obstruction you have understand this how this is leading incarceration means that uh, it becomes irreversible there is entrapment of the viscera into the canal into that uh, you can say in the inguinal canal clear this is incarceration and strangulation when the arterial supply is compromised it will be leading to the strangulation further will be leading to the infarction clear this is the hernia now we are moving on to the volvulus Vol what is volvulus volvulus is the you can say twisting of the intestine around itself this is very easy no need to explain it in detail to means intestine it is it is you can say twisted around itself this is called as the volvulus now where it is common volvulus is most common in the sigmoid colon clear it is most common in the sigmoid colon then after sigmoid colon it is common in the cecum after cecum in the small bowel after small bowel into the stomach and very rarely in the transverse colon very rare most common you have to remember the sigmoid colon clear this is called as the volvulus now we are moving on towards our third uh, cause that is the adhesions what are adhesions basically their name indicate adhesions what means adhesions means adhesion means to adhere to stuck to uh, join together that is called as the adhesion now what happens that the two uh, segments of the intestine they joins together normally what happens that normally our part of the intestine and the, our organs they are basically slippery and they move over each other but in adhesions what happen that due to some reasons due to infection and mainly after the surgery of months or years after surgery what happens that the two parts of the small intestine either they join with each other they join with the abdominal wall or they join with some other visceras for suppose what happens that this is your uh, part of the intestine and this is your second part of the intestine me intestine is present like whole like this na? like this is your intestine so i have taken the two parts here now what happens that after surgery because because in the surgery there are certain uh, means the our gloves is, uh, means uh, you can say we have certain instruments that attach to that intestine and the gloves that are means uh, you can say we touch that part of the intestine and thus there are certain scars there are certain uh, you can say the stitches so there are certain reasons due to which the after surgery the adhesions they develop these adhesions basically they are the fibrous bands they develop between the two parts of the intestine and joins them together so in this way a fibrous band it develops and now this seems like that it is a loop it is a loop that is covered 
clear now you can see here that it becomes a loop that is covered now what happens that as, uh, as the organs as our viscera they are continuously moving and they are slippery so the other organs they may entrap in this loop clear from here they may entrap in this loop and this is called as the internal herniation means this is your this is your for suppose two parts of the intestine and they become from here in between them they become adhered to each other clear and now what happens that the another viscera it comes and it moves inside this this in this way this is called as the internal herniation means this loop is closed from here upside because of the fibrous band because of the adhesion and now this part it uh, i mean this is another part that is moving inside it into it and this is called as the internal herniation now this part means it is obstructed and obviously it will be ca causing the vascular compromise and will be resulting into the infarction in this way adhesions they may result in the intestinal obstruction clear adhesions when they result in the obstruction when there is a uh, you can say another viscera that moves inside that loop clear this is the how adhesion re results in the intestinal obstruction then we have the fourth and the last cause that is intussusception what is intussusception intussusception is basically the movement of the proximal part of the intestine into the immediately distal part means the proximal part protrudes into the distal part clear and this is most common in the ileocecal region it is most common in the ileocecal region clear now what happens that for suppose this is your ileum here is your ileum and here is your cecum here from here the large intestine has been started what happens that when there is a peristaltic movement so this part of the intestine it becomes contracted clear this is your whole lumen this is your small intestine this is your cecum what happens when peristaltic wave occur this small intestine it becomes this contracted while the lumen of this remains same when this is contracted this contracted part it moves inside the lumen of the cecum or the large intestine and this will be finally resulting in the obstruction and the vascular compromise will occur obviously and will be leading to the infarction in this way these are the four causes that results in the intestinal obstruction clear the uh, reason for this into subsection uh, is not no known but important thing here to remember that this into subsection is most common cause of the intestinal obstruction in children and children mainly less than 2 years old this is very important to remember that this is the most common cause of the uh, intestinal obstruction in the children less than 2 years old clear so these are the four causes hernias valvulus adhesions into subsections i told you the clinical features of this disease intestinal obstruction if you have any query any confusion you can ask in the comment section thank you so much allah hafiz